What's up, Jack and Jill motorcycle in the BMW world? I'm gonna be doing a little bit of work on my 2015 R1200 GS today. It's got 53,000 miles on it, and as you can plainly see, I am a uh, larger than average human being. So I wanna do a shock upgrade, but I don't wanna replace the shocks completely. It's got the dynamic ESA, so it's already got everything on it that it really needs to be effective, but I'm gonna do an upgrade to it that will improve performance without really costing a lot of money. Uh, what I've got in this box is a pair of Touratech Progressive Springs for my bike. And what we're gonna do is take the shocks off the bike, then use a spring compressor to minorly disassemble the shocks and put the new springs on the existing shocks and then put them back in the bike. It's a little more involved than previous generations because they changed the design of the front shock. It used to be a stud that came up out of the shock and you put a nut on it and it was easy to kind of wiggle out. But now it's got an eye at the top that you run a bolt through horizontally just like the rear shock. So a little more, a little bit of the bike has to come apart. I've never taken this bike apart, so George is gonna be showing me what I need to pay attention to, and uh, we're gonna get through that. If you hang on just a second, I'll show you the springs. We'll pull them out of the box and show you what we got going on, and we'll get going from there. So we've got a piece of paper. They are taped together. So let me grab my razor again. So what we've got here is Touratech suspension, shock spring, made in the EU, Netherlands by HyperPro and more tape. There's some additional paperwork in the box and of course, a Touratech sticker. Gotta have stickers. Let's see what we got here. Product installation instructions and a cruise tools catalog. I've used cruise tools uh, a lot and they're really great and now Touratech sells them. Uh, so check those out, they're really fantastic tools. I was telling you to look for an installation video. Now we pretty much know what we're doing and when I say we, I mean George and I, I guess I trust him. Although the box appears to be childproof. Oh, that's because it opens from the front and more tape. Razor blade is the most important tool. So then inside the box, something in Dutch or German, uh, fork, mount the preload clip. Okay, so it's got a little bit of instructions. We'll take a look at that. Spring manual, we'll take a look at that. Stickers, I haven't gotten to the part where you can actually see the spring yet. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm pushing for. And in the middle of all that packaging, we finally have the spring. So this is the progressive spring. Normally springs would be, you'd see them evenly spaced. And we'll pull the old spring out and, and show that off. I'm guessing this is probably the front spring to tell you the truth, because it seems a little narrow. So we'll figure out based on the instructions, which way goes up, which way goes down, and we'll show you how to do this. So I was right, the front spring is narrow and tall, and the rear spring is wide diameter and short, it would be very difficult to get these mixed up. You don't need to do a lot of prep on the bike ahead of time, but the one thing you do need to do that's it's not necessary, but it makes things easier, is put it in the one up setting and put it on the softest setting because that will just make everything easier to compress once it's unplugged because it's already in the lowest, softest setting. So once you've done that, then you gotta start uh, taking things apart and I'll leave it up to George whether we start with the front shock or the rear shock, that'll be his decision. So the seat's off, but we gotta strip the bike down a good bit. We gotta take off a whole bunch of the panels and we got to, actually what we have to do is take the air box off to get to the front shock mount. And to get the air box off, we gotta take a bunch of this stuff off. So I'm not gonna bore you or even use one of those fancy uh, time-lapse things. We're just gonna magically come back and the bike will be stripped down. So. Now I'm gonna show you what's going on with the bike that we've got now that we've got it disassembled a little bit. Okay, you can see the bike is disassembled to the point where we can get to the shock. And here you can see this is why we had to take the air box off because this has the bolt that goes through the side instead of straight down the top. And to get to that, the air box has to come off. To get the air box off, the fuel tank has to come off. When you take the air box off, you wanna put something down in your intake, even though the you know, the, the valve is, the butterfly is closed. You wanna put something in there just cause you don't want this, especially on this side, coolant reservoir is right there. You don't want that dumping down in there and you have to clean that out. That's just bad. So you see, you just put 
some little rags down there. This is all the body panels. Three on each side, the fuel tank, and the air box, which kind of looks like one of those uh, superhero jet packs, if I'm being honest. And this generation only has one fuel pump assembly on it, and that's where it is. And the collar's metal, so they fix that. And there's the fuel pump controller and the electrical connectors. Now that we've got the box off, we're doing the front one first, as George said, because that's the most likely to cause problems. And if we're gonna have a problem, we wanna find out sooner in the day rather than later. So as you can see, we have removed the front wheel and put the axle back in, and we're gonna put this jack on a piece of wood, I'm guessing, to uh, support the front end. Since we're taking the shock off, we don't want the front end to sag down. So we're gonna put, we're gonna support the front end with the jack on the axle so that everything stays where it is. And when we get that shock out, clean it up a little bit after we take the spring off. See, being a mechanic can be fun sometimes. You get to spin fun toys. Whee! Whee! You'd be surprised how often we use this block of wood. And then when we put the front wheel back on, we'll clean that axle and put some fresh grease on it. So this is a little hard to see. It's a little dim. Sorry about that. What we're doing right now is trying to find the electrical connector. There's the shock. So that's the electrical connector where it starts. It goes back down the A arm. So it's got two clips on the A arm that you need to take it out of. And then it comes over here. Comes over where? Right there. Right there. So then that's got to come out. And of course, you could see it better if we didn't need to use our fingers. Some things are more difficult than they need to be. Those connectors can be a little tough to get apart. A little probe or a screwdriver will help you. And then they'll come right off, hopefully without you know, destroying the wiring harness. It's okay if we break it, right? Because this is my bike, not a customer's bike. That's right. This is exciting stuff, isn't it, folks? There we are. There we go. All right, so now that the wire's disconnected, now we can actually start removing the shock. And you want to be really careful with those wires because, you know, if the wires get busted, then it definitely won't work. What is it on the bottom? T55. And we can reuse these bolts, right? We don't need to have fresh bolts. I'll have to look that up. We'll be reusing these. Yeah, we will be reusing these because we didn't think to get any. But it's okay, once again, because it's my bike, not a customer's bike. Oh. You do things on your own motorcycle that you wouldn't do on somebody else's. Because if I die, then I don't feel bad for the rest of my life. If That's I kill you, I'm going to feel really bad for the rest yeah. of my life, which will probably be a very long time. So that, that, has a, that has a very long head on it. It's a little easier to get to, but of course, you have to take the airbox off to get to it. And believe it or not, folks, this is the hard part. Actually, swapping the spring is not terribly difficult, as long as you have the right tool, which we'll show you. So none of that proved to be terribly difficult, no. which was nice. It's just PC. And while one of the things we're gonna do, while I got a set of radiator protectors that I'm gonna put on there while we've got the bike apart. And that's, you know, when you're doing one thing, you might as well do another. So that's got a washer on it, unlike the other one. Now here's the fun part, pull that shock out. And then a little boom, boom, out comes the shock. So as it turns out, the spring compressor tool that we have won't work with these shocks because of the way it's designed. Do not take this off. Do not take that off. That is under pressure. So we're going to try try to use some straps to compress the spring so that we can take the clip off the other end and then and thus get the new spring on. Have you done this before or is this a no, first time experiment? I've done this before. Okay. And this is just a regular strap like your dealer has on their bikes that they get out of the crates. Motorcycle dealer, that is. Motorcycle dealer, yes, not your strap dealer. I think this, this does qualify as doing it the hard way though, right? Well, it's always better to have the proper tool. Yeah. Well, and now we know that to do these, you either have to plan on doing it this way or you need a different tool. Or an adapter for my tool. Yeah. Put your thumb there. Put my thumb there. Christmas present. One on each side. This is kind of exciting. All the while taking care not to mess with the wiring. Okay, now I got this. This side. Wow, you are freaky strong. 
so that you can see, now you can see the spring has been compressed enough that it moves. So now we just gotta take this end off and then we can pull it off. Ooh, a hammer. Now, didn't you just say not to take that end off? Well, you're not taking this portion off. Never unscrew okay. the reservoir from the body. There's That's under pressure. Yes. So we gotta get that circlip off or clip ring or what's the, does that have a technical name? So if we're going the other way with the spring, why do we have to take that part off? Because we have to gain access. Oh, we've got to move it, move the spring down farther so that we can get to those pieces there. That makes sense. See, that does, you know, this comes up. And that's the rubber bumper that the instructions said to push down to gain access to the clip. And there's the other clip. Here, let me show. There's the other clip is right there. This is kind of exciting. Come on now. There it goes. Now, once you get it here, you want to be super careful of that wire. Pull that in the little channel. Can you turn it so that the gap in the ring matches up with the wire? Yeah, you probably could. Yeah, you probably could. <laughs> but all the other pieces have to come off that exact same way, so it's good practice. Yeah, the other pieces won't fit over. But that's why that little channel is there. Well, that's interesting. What's interesting? <laughs> I guess this bushing in the middle has to come out too. Okay. Ooh, can we use a hammer? So the collar is too big to go, it's too small to go over the bushing. Yeah, so we gotta take the bushing out. This will help us get the bushing out. So George says it's a split bushing, it comes out from both sides. At least that's what it looks like. At least that's what it looks like. More penetrating oil. Can you use too much penetrating oil? I think not. Mm, difficult. And it's coming out again. One eternity later. So that's a split bushing, as we discovered. And with one side out, <laughs> you can slip the collar over the fitting and take it off the bottom. And I didn't show it all to you, but he just had to muscle that out of there with some penetrating oil. Power of the three-quarter thumb. <laughs> the power of the thumb compels you. And then the spring comes right out, right off. And we're gonna put the new spring on with the lettering facing up. There's the stock spring, and there's the Touratech Progressive spring. They're the same length, but you can see how they're coiled a little different. Which end is the top of the spring? So it goes this way. Do we need to clean that up before we? Uh... Sure, why don't you clean that up? <laughs> just, just a question. New spring in place. Assembly is the reverse of disassembly. And again, making sure not to mangle the wire. And that just clips right back in. Letters facing up. Letters facing up. Now we compress. 80s pseudo German techno pop. Ah. You and your bizarre music. I say pseudo German because they weren't German. They were techno pop. Come on, grunt. There you go. So what lessons did we learn here, George? Split bushings. Split bushing. And you only got to take one of them out. Yeah, you only got to take one of them out, which is nice. So we got that going for us. And if anybody out there can design a <laughs> nylon strap that's like red on one side and blue on the other <laughs> so you can tell if you've got it twisted, I would buy them. 
This is, this is, these are the things that remind you you're mortal. No good. <laughs> Too poor to pay attention. Uh, I'm gonna have to edit so much of this out. <laughs> I think that's enough to... Hey, look at that. Does it go, do you remember which groove it was in? Yeah, it was on the top groove. Top groove. It's the only one that's not oxidized. Oh yeah. It's pushed all the way up to the top. I was gonna say, did we take that off? We did not. Make sure you have that on first. Yes. And then it just pops right into the groove. Just pops right in. And then gently, gently. So now that we know how it works, what are the chances of the rear shock also having a split bushing? Now here's a question, how are you gonna get the bushing back in? Here's what that half of the bushing looks like. It's got a little rubber cup on it that helps hold it in place. Probably was an O-ring when it was new. Yeah, maybe, and uh, we chewed that up just a little bit, but not bad. Doesn't matter, it's not a mating surface. That's right, it just holds the bolt. Just hit it with a hammer. Yeah, you really can't see it, but that's what it looks like when it's back in. And there you can see the channel for the cable that makes this easy to get on and off. And as they always say, assembly is the reverse of disassembly. So we're just gonna- Offer up the front shock. Offer up the front shock, there you go. Whoops, don't say whoops. Gotta make sure it's pointed okay. the right way. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's important. Well, once you get in there with the bolt and squeeze it together, it'll be fine. Yeah. And there's, that's how you know you got the bushing all the way in is it fits into the fitting housing. This is the part where I entreat you to use your torque wrench. We're not gonna tell you the torque values of the shock bolts because you should look that up. It may be different on your motorcycle, so you need to look it up every time. Don't, don't count on remembering. And you don't know what the torque is by hand. You, you just don't, trust me on that. Even if your wrist pops at 20 Newton meters, that's not an accurate adjustment. 